What's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. So we've got more stuff, more stuff. Um, fork seals for the bandit, but there ain't no bushings, which is a bugger. I really want to do the whole lot and I was sure it came with them, but it don't. Ugh. Never mind. These are all balls racing ones again. Uh, I just really like that stuff. So anyway, we can get that done. At least I can stop it leaking. That's the main thing. And I'll just do the bushes when I do the whole project. Um, Cause I want to make sure it's all good. Um, so that's all sweet. Um, what we're going to do today is have a, have a stab at getting the brakes done and dusted. The brake fluid hasn't turned up, so I can't use that. So I'm just going to use, <laughs> I'm just going to use oil. <laughs> it don't matter. I'm only pumping it like hydraulically. It's not like it's going to stay there. I just want the pistons out because they're wedged in there, they ain't going anywhere. But what, what I'm thinking of doing is I'm gonna hook these back up to the bike, I'm gonna to top it all up with oil, and I'm just gonna use the oil to pump it out. That'd be all right. It'll lubricate it as well, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I know you're not supposed to do it that way, but it's, it's still an oil. It'll be fine. Everything's gonna get flushed through and cleaned out anyway because there's loads of little bits of smudge and smooth and God knows what else in there as well. And I just want the whole thing clean because it's brakes and you don't cock about with brakes. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, what else have we got? Um, pom, 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 pom. Yeah, so I mean, we, you know, we, we are sort of getting there. There's loads of little jobs that I want to do, like the chain will need cleaning up. I want to lube all that up. I want to have the wheels off and just check the bearings on them as well. And I'll do the swing arm as well, just to make sure there's no play in it. Make sure it's all talked up right. Um, the foot pegs are loose, that all needs doing. The carbs, I did rebuild and stick on. Um, I haven't finished all that yet, so there is going to be another one because I've got throttle cables coming. And there's no way that you're going to get the cables on with the throttles in place. So I did do things like set the um, set the float heights and stuff. You don't do it with that bung in the bottom because that's not a bung to do your float heights. That is actually a heater. That's my cock up and I'm leaving it in. I don't care. I, ain't, I didn't have a manual and I ain't pulled one apart off before. So. <laughs> but yeah, it's like a little heater. There's no wiring on the bike for it or anything. Um, and on the other set of carbs, it is literally just a bolt, that's it. But uh, it's just to stop them icing up, basically. Um, I wasn't sure that this had them on it, but there you go, that's what it is. So they're gonna have to come off and I'll, I'll show you how you set the um, float heights and all that malarkey. Massive, massive, massive thank you to, there's a few people actually. I've just had another one this morning. I can't remember his name. I'll, I'll be back. He was one, and then there was Andy Girding, he's another one. He's a gem, that man. And there was somebody else this morning, I cannot remember his name. Could be Troy, I'm not sure. But they sent me a copy of the workshop manual. Um, and no sooner had the workshop manual turned, you know, all these PDF copies had rocked up, <laughs> the bloody Haynes book of fairy tales turned up as well. <laughs> but at least I've got a Suzuki manual, which is cool. And the difference is like night and day. The proper workshop manual is way better than the Haynes one. Way better. So I'm gonna be using that one. And it also means I can have it on my phone and stuff as well for part numbers and stuff. So that's all good. Um, headstock bearings, they also need to be checked. New throttle cables, you know, stuff like that basically. But he is going back on the road. Oh, I've got to sort out that stupid exhaust as well. <laughs> I need to make a rear mounting bracket for it. Because it's just stupid. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I'm doing today. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying these videos as well. I've been trying to get one out a day, which is sweet. The amount of time it takes is ridiculous. So I do apologise if you have to wait a bit and then you get two all at the same time. But my little laptop's having a fit. <laughs> it's not used to all this. <laughs> oh. I still need some spitting videos from people, you know, where you're doing the coffee spitting out thing. We could have a couple of blinders coming. I've been in touch with a couple of people. You'll know who they are as soon as you see them. And they're going to do me a video, which is mega. Oh, I'm so looking forward to that. That is going to make my day when those ones come through. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, I'm sorry if the picture's rubbish. <laughs> but you were sort of wedged up in the corner there. <laughs> well, hopefully it'll work. Right, this is probably a bit of a cockeyed way of doing it. But all I've done is I've took the... They've got a reservoir, master cylinder, hose that normally comes down to this splitter. Um, and then you get a line off there down to each caliper. So all I've done is I've took this hose off just because it, it's easy, you know, it's bolted onto the bar, I can operate the lever and all that stuff. And we don't need any of the other shenanigans. So all I'm doing is run a single lead with a single banjo and I'm reusing the copper washers. Because again, I don't really care. I've got new ones to stick in when I do the job properly, but for now, this will do. And it's just me trying to get the flaming pistons out. That's it. I don't care if they leak a little bit. All right, so he's in there. Happy days. Treat. All right, let's have this off. State of these. They're just nasty. Oh, there's all still coming at me, flaming forks. That is getting done. That may well be the next job, actually. Right. So then all I'm going to do is tip some oil in it. Um, what have I got? Oh, let's just use the thing. Is there oil in that? Yes. quite funny when you're bleeding it this way using motor oil <laughs> basically you pull the lever in obviously that expels it out the bleed nipple into the you know down the tube and into the bucket when you release it it takes quite a while for the fluid to go down because this is a lot thicker obviously but I think she's bleeding up okay in fact I think we're there actually let's just nip that up and have a go Yeah, and there's loads of pressure there. Right, um, as far as bleeding it goes, everybody's got their own way of doing it, I know. This is my way. It's just a bit of tube. <laughs> it's quite thick walled stuff, as you can see. Um, but basically, this end has just got a split in it. Um, where is it? So yeah, I'll just put like a one inch split in it. I don't know if you can see it. I'll try and do the zoomy thing, but there's a split there, inch long and it's just got a bolt shoved in the end. Um, so what happens is as you squeeze the lever, obviously all fluid, like it's supposed to be, gets forced through this and it will find its way out through that split. But as you release it again, because it's quite thick walled, the hose closes again and it completely seals it. So you can just sit there pumping the levers and it's, it's just like a real easy one way valve and it works. And it works a treat. So, and I thought, what was that? Was that a fuel line or something? I don't know. I don't know why it came off, but I've had it for ages and it just works. Right, let's see if we can't get these pistons out then. I need a block or two. Uh, that one, that one. I don't know. Let's try a few of these, see how we get on. One of the pistons is moving all right, the other one just in. So this one, you can see it's, it's actually trying to come out. So what I'm gonna do is bung that one up. Actually, I might try and force that one back in a bit. There we go. Is that 
bit more. Right, so it's just blocking it out against the housing on the caliper. So as I pump this out, the piston will come up and grip it. And then the idea is, if I can keep pumping it, I might be able to get the other one to start working its way out. There we go. That one's still coming out easier, isn't it? The idea is just to try and bring them out together. Because as one pops out, the other one's got hardly anything keeping it in there. I know it's not the right way of doing it. I mean, don't tell you to do this in the Haynes Book of Fairy Tales or the workshop manual. <laughs> Certainly doesn't say, put 10W40 in it. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's just an oil. Come on. Yeah, we're nearly there, I think. Where's the bucket? Pistons themselves don't know, but it's only the last little bit that's a bit. Ugh. The rest of it looks all right. Oh, you cow! bit of air in it. There we are. Well, oh, that's one out. We should be able to wiggle that one out. Happy days! Right, that can all drain out. Right, the rear caliper has been a right pain. But then again, I always knew it would be. That's the one that was seized proper solid, and it's got the piston either side. So all I've done is stuck it back together again, put the O-ring in for the, you know, to join the two halves together. I don't know if you can see this, but where I'm pumping it out, the pistons are nasty as. That might clean off, you scrape it, it does come away, but I don't know what state the pistons are in. Um, but the the seals are actually coming out with it as well. I don't know if you can see this. There's a seal there, and there's a seal on this side as well. That's all coming out with it. So I'm having to go quite careful on this one. I think I really want for this one to come out further. I'll try clamping this and doing all sorts of stuff, and it just ain't happening. So. We might have to get a little bit creative, but I'm going to pump it out as far as I can. Hopefully I'll get one of them out. And then the idea, because there's a bleed nipple on either side. So what I might end up doing is if I can get one of the damn things to come out, then I'll, I've got some spare steel down there. I'll make up a plate, you know, that length, and I'll bolt it with the O-ring in place so it's all sealed. And that'll, that'll bung up the holes and then I should be able to hook it back up and pump the other one out. But yeah, this one's gone.
Right. Okay, we might get that one out. This one is going to be a pain. <laughs> but hey, at least one of them's out, and I can check the state of those those pistons, which will be good. Um, where's my thing? I keep losing my spanners. It's a wonder anything gets made in here. Um, that one. Isn't that one? Yes. I also don't think this is the proper banjo bolt for this caliper because it's got three washers under it. <laughs> We'll have to check. I might end up just getting some more banjos. But it looks like that one is coming out. All right. All right. See, so yeah, it seals all popped out and everything there. <laughs> There's a little O ring that joins the two halves together. So, what happens is that. Uh, obviously the banjo and the brake line goes on here. These two halves clamp together and it's got an O-ring that sits in there which marries up to this one on this side, up here. So as you pump it, basically fluid can come from this side into this side and get in behind this piston and, and wind them out evenly. Um, which we might have to use a little bit creative with it. Come on! Alright, he's out. No, it's all totally popped. <laughs> well, at least it's out. That was the, the main goal. I'm not sure. Oh, actually. We might, might be alright with this. I think it's just surface crud, because if you scrape it off, it comes off and there's shiny metal underneath. I just need to see if there's any big scores or anything in it. Um, they're not very pretty on this side, obviously, but then again, they never are. Yeah, we might have got away with that for now. These are obviously all going to get new pistons and all that malarkey when I do the proper build. For now, literally all I'm doing is trying to service it and get everything working safely and properly so I can actually get the bike back on the road. But that is actually coming up. Yeah, I think we might be. If you want to scrape the goo off, and it's, you know, that's what it looked like, and it's quite tough stuff. It's still, I think it's just all the rubber and junk and stuff in here. Well, these have perished, gone all manky, stuck themselves to the pistons, but it does come off. Right, they're going to go through the parts washer as well, and shove the other ones in there, and um, we'll see what they actually come out like. Can't stay in. Ah, there we go. There we are. Right. I think we're okay. The very edge of this. Um, has added when I was uh, doing the shot blasting. That's on that very edge face. So the coating is gone. Um, and these are going to get replaced anyway. It's this surface here that I'm more worried about. 
because if there's any big nicks and graunches and dinks and nastiness going on, it's just going to eat through the new seals and it'll it will leak like a sieve and you really don't want brake fluid coming out and going all over your pads and discs and stuff like that. It don't work very well when that happens. Right, these are going to go through the ultrasonic. The stuff that's in there is essentially a degreasing detergent anyway. So it's going to go through there to start off with. It's mucky as hell, but it's going to help shift some of this stuff because it's kind of crusted on and whatnot. And then I'll have them out, stick them in a bucket with some more detergent, scrub the bejesus out of them with nothing more than a toothbrush, the toothbrush, just because it's it's you know it's not wire, it's plastic. So I can get in and get all this stuff off, get them clean, and I'll be doing the same thing with the the castings. But I think we're in. I can get them nice and clean. I'm getting painted. The seals are knackered. They're just perished and cracked. Even the second seal, you know, the scraper seal. It's just mullered. Right, this is my trusty old parts washer. It is old, it is knackered. It's rusty on the inside. <laughs> but anyway, just like picking out the seals and everything else. And all I've got in here is um, like uh, detergent, you know, washing up liquid, that sort of stuff. Um, and all I'm doing is giving it a scrub because obviously I had all this filled with oil and it's had brake fluid in it anyway. So I want to try and get most of that off. Good thing about these though is that you can, where you've got these little ports, you can shove a nozzle on it and apart from getting soaked, <laughs> it forces the solution through all the, the channels and everything else. So, you know, you know you're sort of getting in there because you can't get a brush in there. And all I'm using is a toothbrush. That's it, nothing more. Um, severe than that. I'm just trying to get it clean. So once it's done in here, he's not so bad. He's going in the, the ultrasonic. Now this is just water. I have put the, the pistons in here and they are coming up all right and it is definitely loosening stuff. Um, but I just want to agitate it and try and, you know, get some of the schmoo and smuts and stuff off. And then all the fluid will be changed and there'll be a cleaner going in there as well. Uh, one thing I will say, the way that these work, get you do what you want, I don't really care. But the way that these work is they, they send um, sound waves, shock waves through the fluid. So the fluid has got to be in contact with whatever it is that you want to get clean. So with a piston like this, hollow in the middle, if you was to upend it and stick it in like that, you're still going to have an air gap at the top fluid ain't going to clean that bit so stick it in that way so it's completely full and then if you want to flip it over or do whatever that's on you um, but you really want the whole thing immersed with these it's not so much of a problem because there is a channel that joins the two halves of the calipers on this one um, so you know it all kind of bleeds out anyway but I think we're going to be all right here I think it's they are cleaning up really well and I want to get them clean, so I want to get them painted today and then reassembled. So we're going to leave them in there and I'll carry on with the next one. Right. Ew. Where's my bucket? Right. Ooh. Dirty water. Yeah. Right, so these have just gone through the Oh, sorry, it's just detergent in here. They're coming up all right, actually. This is just fresh water. Nothing more than that. There's no. Come on. Get out. All right. See, that little. These are the rear brakes, and this is the one that the seals were. All chewed up and nasty looking. Um, what have I got I can fish it out with? Um, um, um. I ain't going to do it. What have I got? What have I got? See, I don't really want to go digging about with this 
pointy thing because I don't want to scratch it. Excuse me. Don't really want to scratch it up, but. off it's just reluctant to do so <laughs> thing is I want to try and get this little aperture clean as I can so that's where the, the seals gonna sit but I also don't want to mar it up and scratch the bejesus out of it because that in itself could cause problems um, I think we'll be all right now Pistons came up really good. Um, where's that? It is abrasive, but that's doing it. It's very lightly across it, but it's just abrasive, just so it it takes all the muts and stuff off and I'm not scratching it up or anything this um, scotch bright is quite old <laughs> it's a good little scrubbing pad and if you just go easy with stuff see he's all right what's wrong with that it'll do Right, we're all set. Um, what have we been doing? Right, so basically they all got washed down with fresh water, then they went through the ultrasonic with just some uh, the cleaning solution in. All washed down with fresh water again. Blow them off dry with the airline. <clears throat> then they've had the carb cleaner on. So basically they're as clean and as degreased as they're ever gonna get. Um, they're all nice and dry. I've had the heat and extra them and blah, blah, blah. So um, then all I've done is just taped it all up. This is just lock wire. I've left the bleed nipples in because I've got new ones in the kit anyway. So I've just gone lock wire around the bleed nipple knowing that's going to get removed. And then I'll just string it up on this and this is just held in the vise. So it's the only way I've really got to do in this. <laughs> oh, Alex should move this. Steve-O wouldn't thank me otherwise. Come on. Right, so is this gonna be the perfect paint job? No. <laughs> is it gonna be good enough? Yes, for now. Um, obviously I just wanna protect them, so that is what I'm doing. Um, and I guess I could just leave these overnight so they can harden up properly. I might even leave the heater under them just to warm them up. Um, they were sat on the radiator for, uh, I don't know, half hour, 40 minutes whilst I was doing stuff. So they're nice and warm and that does tend to help. So, come on. Ooh, he's got a proper fan. Come on. There we go. Right. Right, that's it, all done. Uh, where's the lid gone? <laughs> I put 
put stuff down and I could never find it again. There we go. Um, what am I using? It's this stuff. VHT, high temperature caliper paint. <laughs> and it's black. <laughs> black. Um, I just don't want purple ones anymore. Is it the perfect paint job? No. <laughs> um, looks a damn sight better than it did though. Um, <clears throat> there are a couple of little guffs and stuff in the castings. When I come to do the proper project, I'll probably just get new calipers if I can't dress all these up and make them look real pretty. Um, but they're clean, they're totally stripped down. All the threads and that have been bunged up, so nothing's getting in there that shouldn't do. And they'll all be protected with a coat of paint. So that's all good. Right. What to do next? <laughs> Another puddle of oil. Um, I might as well do that actually, have the forks out, eh? Because they are leaking like a sieve and they need doing. So, yeah, I'm going to do that, I think. Yeah, we get the forks out. got the forks off. This one was a struggle. <laughs> um, the one on the left hand side of the bike. Um, <coughs> where stuff's been painted, it's got paint on it and that was obviously digging in on the top yoke. But it's the bottom yoke that was causing all the grief. Or triple clamp or whatever you want to call it. Um, I had a wooden mallet in the top. Um, and basically knocking it with a plastic dead blow hammer from you know, obviously no metal on metal um, but just to sort of tap it through and it's only gentle taps and eventually it came out but the, the bottom yoke is that the, the inside of the ball that this goes up through and it's all discoloured and all sorts of stuff so that's all going to need to be cleaned up but the two stantons themselves don't actually look that bad um, give me a clean up. Um, there's hardly any marks on them. Well, there's a couple of little, you know, just the start of it beginning to pit um, but we'll probably be able to just drag those out with something really light need to get the paint off <laughs> that's just stupid if you're gonna paint stuff take it off your bike <laughs> there's like a tiny little bit of surface rust here that's where it goes through the bottom yoke, and it is a tiny, yeah, your fingernail, it all just comes off. So, and there's a little bit of pitting down here, but again, there's nothing to feel. It's pretty much only just starting to go. But they're actually in really good nick. This bike is 1995. 
no idea if these are the original forks to it. On bits of the bike, definitely lucky. But these are actually, yeah, it's all just any discoloration there is, is just rubbing straight off. So I think we got lucky on those. Fork seals are knackered though. <laughs> I am annoyed I haven't got the bottom bushes. Yeah, well, there's two bushes. These are like break apart forks. So essentially you take the dust cover off, there's a little clip that comes off and then you knock them apart to get the seals out. And there's two bushes in here. There's an inner and an outer. And ideally, because I'm in there anyway, I would have changed them, but I ain't got them. They didn't come with the kit. I just got, I just got the, the fork seals, you know, the oil seals and, and the, the dust covers. Which is a pain. But there you go. Oh, man, kids, oh, I do need a damn good clean. Oh, at one point, they were black. <laughs> Whoever did it didn't do a very good job, did they? Right, what I think I might do, I'm going to have a look and see if I can't get the, the bushes for these as well. Um, I can't see if there's a couple of washer on there. It doesn't look like it's leaking from underneath though. No. And one of them is definitely the top of the cell. I'm going to have a look and see if I can find some uh, bushes. Just because I can have the whole thing apart, I can give these a proper spritz and clean up. I might even just paint the bottoms of them or something, I don't know, make them look a bit more presentable. Um, but yeah, if I can get the uh, the bushes, then I can do the job properly, rather than half a job just for now. Well, I know it's all going to have to come about, but this is going to be my bike for a bit. And um, if the seals are gone, you know, what state are the bushes going to be in? And I'm not sure, you know, where you have to slam them apart. You know, I'm not sure we might end up causing some damage there to the bushes themselves. So I would rather change the whole lot. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Oh, why didn't it come with the bushes? I just saw a seal kit and that's what I ordered. Trouble is, that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm left with a couple of choices I'm going to have a look and see if you can just get the bushes if you can I think I'm going to get some and then we'll have them all apart and we'll do the job properly if I can't and it means just getting a whole noose then I'm probably just going to do the seal kits because um, it's all going to have to come apart when I do the proper project bike anyway um, but this is going to do my head in I'm going to clean it up and see how clean I can get it um, but if I was pulling it all apart, then it's the ideal time just to shot blast it and get rid of the flasting, you know, the casting flashes and all that stuff. You know, do a nice job of it and paint it or powder coat it and, you know, away you go. But I'm probably going overboard. This is going to be a knockabout bike. This is just going to be a commuter scoop for me for a bit. Um, so it doesn't need to be immaculate. It just needs to work and be safe and, you know, all that sort of malarkey. So, I don't know, I'm probably going over the top with it, I know. I'm gonna see if I can find some anyway. Um, good news is we've had some other bits turn up. So, Sam is rubbish at guessing what's inside stuff. <laughs> I'm awesome at Christmas, I've got everything. <laughs> I could tell you even what DVD it is, but she's rubbish at it. All I know is there's one really light little thing which is, I think is a couple of O-rings that I ordered from Fowler's. Um, and the other stuff is cable or pipey. <laughs> so, it could be that it's, I ordered an auxiliary fuel tank, just because I thought it'd be easier to get it going with that. And I ain't got one and they are kind of handy. So I ordered one of them. But it could be the throttle cables. If it's the throttle cables, we could be in for a right laugh because I want to get it going. So if it is throttle cables, then tomorrow I've, I'm going to bring them in. We'll have the carbs off, because there's some stuff I did that I didn't catch on film, um, like setting the float heights and all that sort of stuff. 
and there's a few people commented. So I'll, I'll go through and I'll, I'll install the cables and I'll show you the setup and how I'm doing it and blah, 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 blah. We get them on the bike and we see if we can't get it going. Oh, I need to take a jerry can as well then. Yeah, we put a jerry can in the van. Um, so, you know, we might even get it going tomorrow. We won't get it stopping because the brakes are still in bed, but we could get it going. <laughs> it's gonna be loud. <laughs> it's gonna be so loud. But anyway, that's what I'm gonna call it today. Thank you ever so much for watching. Do appreciate it. And I hope we're keeping you entertained a little bit um, during silly times and whatnot. Um, there's gonna be more to come, but I'm back to work in two days time. So you ain't gonna get as many videos after that, but I will still be coming in in the mornings and doing stuff and we'll take you along for the ride. So that'd be sweet. But E is going on the road. I still need a name for it. And I'm still thinking Asbo is gonna be a good one with that exhaust. But anyway, anybody's got any suggestions, give us a shout. <laughs> so anyway, there you go. Thank you very much. Stay safe, look after one another. Cause if you don't do it, no other bugger's gonna. <laughs> and we'll see you again next time. Later.